So, here we go. This first logarithmic problem uses, in fact, most log equations use the definition of what a logarithm is. And we went over this extensively before Thanksgiving break, so that it's probably what Ben White called everything. Hello? Welcome to the class. There we go. Okay. Now, <clears throat> back to what we were doing. Uh, we're going to use the definition of what a logarithm is, and here is the definition of what a logarithm is. X equals four to the third power. Let's, let's review this. With this problem, we have a very simple logarithmic equation log base four of X equals three. But this pairs up with this exponential equation. Where this clearly is the base. This is the exponent. And over here is kind of, I don't know, your answer. Um, what you would what you would put when you would take four to the third power, when you would raise four to the third power. So while you might think of it as being the answer, once it changes to a logarithm, it's called the argument of the function. OK, so if we follow this over here, you see that this that four is the base. Three is the exponent. So there's there and there's that. And then X is the argument of the function. The arg of the function. OK, so that's how you transfer back and forth between a logarithmic and an exponential equation. You have to do that here because notice that X is all trapped inside the argument of the logarithm. How is it going to get out? Only an exponential function will liberate that X and put it over here so we can get X equals. That's the reason for this. So what we're going to solve here is X equals four to the third power, which is four times four times four, which is 64. And notice I left the answers here. Okay, now here we have the log of X equals negative six. Remember that when you see the word log by itself, the base is 10. So X is going to equal 10 to the negative six. Well, this is scientific notation, okay? And really not everybody here has had a science class. The first thing you learn in any science class is scientific notation. So let me show you what this stands for. This stands for 1.0 times 10 to the negative six. And this is a code. This is a code for move the decimal place. 
move the decimal six places to the left, six places to the left. So we're going to take that and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Putting in, putting a zero in for each of these little valleys. Zero, 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 zero. And that's our answer, a one with five zeros in front of it. Now the ln of x equals 5. The ln is a logarithm. It's just another way of writing log base e of x equals 5. What does this mean? That's what it means right there. This means an equivalent statement in exponential form is x equals e to the fifth power, where e is a number that's about 2.7. It's what we call a universal constant, like pi is a universal constant, and there are other ones. If you stay in the sciences, you'll learn about them. Now here we have something a little more complicated, so now we have to talk about a first step you have to take. I didn't bother with it here because these really are very, very simple equations. But there is a step that I, I neglected to take and now I'm going to take it. And that is I have to be aware that the argument The argument of the logarithm function must be a positive number. Not even zero, definitely not negative, only a positive number. And the way we write positive is, let's see, where's I, where have I got room here? X, the argument for this function, must be strictly greater than zero. That's the way you say X must be positive. Same here. The argument of the function is just X. So X must be greater than zero. Meaning X has to be a positive number because only positive numbers are greater than zero. All right, now. Now we have a more complicated argument. The argument of this function is 2x minus 5. And here's the base, four is the base. It really should be written lower, but I think the typesetting that they do just won't permit the four to be lower. So there's the base and there's the exponent. But before we change this to an exponential equation, we have to do this. Very first thing, Figure out what your answer is allowed to equal, and that means find the domain. All right, the argument of the function, you take the arg, you set it strictly greater than zero. So 2x minus five is going to be strictly greater than zero. Well, let's solve that. Add 5 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0 over here on the left, leaving me with 2x on the left, strictly greater than 
zero plus five is five. Now, come back up here. I'll have two X is strictly greater than five. Two divide by two X is strictly greater than five over two. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll see that that is exactly 2.5. It's not one of those fractions that, that when you take the decimal expansion, it becomes almost like one third. You can never, uh, the decimal expansion goes on forever. Repeating threes. This one is exact, at least that. What this is saying is that for this 2x minus 5 to remain strictly greater than 0, the x that we come up with has got to be greater than 2.5. If it's less than 2.5, then we just won't have a solution. But as you can see, there is a solution. So let's work the problem. I'm going to come down here. There's more room. Okay, um, the argument 2x minus 5 equals the base 4 raised to the exponent 2. Well, I know what that is. 2x minus 5 equals 16. Plus 5, plus 5. On the left, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so we're left with a 2x. And on the left, we have 21. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So x equals 21 divided by 2. Now, before I put my answer in, this would be the normal answer to give in my math lab. Notice that the instructions underneath where the answer box would be says type an exact answer in simplified form. Well, I mean, you could leave it 21 over 2, but they answer with a decimal. So given the instructions, I would say both answers are acceptable. Now, is 10.5 greater than 2.5? Yes, it is. So 10.5 is an acceptable answer. And this is the way you solve most logarithmic equations in this book, in the book that this My Math Lab is based on. As you'll see, there is another method, and we will use it, I think, twice. But this method is called solving by the definition of, a, um, of an exponential function. So, right now, we have log x. Make this a little smaller so it's not blurry. Log x plus log of x plus 15 equals 2. Okay, well the base is 10. This argument is x. x has to be greater than 0, strictly greater than 0. And x plus 15 has to be strictly greater than 0. Well, I have to solve that. I have to solve x plus 15. x is strictly greater than 0 is already solved. But x plus 15 is strictly greater than 0. I have to solve it. Subtract 15 from both sides of the inequality. There. So x has to be two things, really? 
it has to be greater than zero and it has to be greater than negative 15, what am I going to do? I am going to come down here and draw a number line. This is the number line or the x-axis. Now let's see, we're going to put what these numbers are. Well, here is zero. I can make that decision. You can too. I'm going to let x equals zero be here and x equals negative 15 be here. Of course, x equals positive 15 is out here, but that's not important. We're only dealing with zero and negative 15. So I'll erase the positive 15 so that nobody gets confused. Now, all of the numbers that are greater than negative 15 are to the right of negative 15. All the numbers to the right of negative 15. And all the numbers greater than zero are to the right of zero. Well, if I, if, if one of my answers or if my only answer is say negative 13, that's great for this because negative 13 is to the right of negative 15, but it's not at all good for x, it has to be greater than zero. No, the answer we get has got to satisfy both x is greater than zero and at the same time x is greater than negative 15. So, we're going to have to go with wherever these lines overlap. This is the domain of our function, log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of x plus 15, and that's going to be the only answer we can accept. So x has to be greater than zero here because any number greater than zero is definitely greater than negative 15. Now we know the answer we get has got to be greater than negative 15, I mean negative zero, I mean zero. The answer we get has got to be greater than zero. Okay, so now let's solve the equation. Look, let me get go to black here, easier to see. Log x plus log of x plus 15 equals two. Okay, first, I can only solve this if I have the log of something equals two. Meanwhile, here, right now, I have the log of something plus the log of something equals two. I can't solve that yet. I have to combine these two log expressions, combine. And that's what the arithmetic of logarithms is for, the properties of logarithms. This property or piece of arithmetic is called the product rule. Which we also covered before Thanksgiving. I just don't have time to go back over the basic rules, so you have to do it. So the log of x plus the log of x plus 15 means that I'm going to be multiplying the arguments x times x plus 15 equals 2. 
Now I have the log of something equals two. I can solve this by using an exponential equation. I need my base, it's 10. And so x times x plus 15 equals 10 to the two. 10 squared, 100. Now this is just going to be a normal um, uh, quadratic equation. X times X is X squared. X times plus 15 is plus 15 X. 10 squared is 100. Now, since this is a, oh, since this is a quadratic equation, we subtract 100 from both sides, so I can set the quadratic equation equal to zero and then solve. So minus 100 minus 100. We'll have x squared plus 15x minus 100 equals zero. Now, if you know how to factor, this is factorable. If you don't, you'll have to put it in the um, quadratic formula, where a is one, b is 15, c is negative 100. I'm gonna factor. Negative 100, I actually write it out here, negative 100, equals a number of different things, but in particular, it's going to equal 20 times negative five. And 20 plus negative five equals our middle number, our B number, 15. So doing this, remember, tells me the numbers I need when I factor. I split my x squared apart. I split my x squared apart. And that's a positive 20, so I put in plus 20 here. And that's a negative five, so I put in a minus five here. Then I set each factor equal to zero and solve the resulting little equation. Subtract 20 from both sides, you get X equals negative 20. Add five to both sides, you get X equals five. Now you look at your domain. Go back up here. X has got to be greater than zero. Negative 20 is not greater than zero. Five is greater than zero. So this is my solution to the equation. And as you can see, that is the solution to the equation. That would be what you type in your answer box, just a five. Okay. Now, you see they get a little more complicated. We're going to be using the product rule again. We have a logarithm plus a logarithm. So we're going to multiply the arguments and come up with one log statement. Oh, but this is different. Look at this. Here we have 
the log of an argument plus the log of an argument equals a number. Here we have the log of an argument plus the log of an argument equals an argument. This is our other method for solving a logarithmic equation. But first, let us not hurry. We have to look at each argument and decide what X has to equal for us to accept the answer, the solution. X is strictly greater than zero and X plus one is strictly greater than zero. Well, if X plus one is strictly greater than zero, then we subtract one from both sides. And we get X is strictly greater than negative one. So we make a quick little X axis or number line. Here is zero. Here's negative one. All the numbers strictly greater than negative one are to the right of negative one. And all the numbers greater than zero are to the right of zero. And where the arrows overlap, those numbers satisfy both inequalities, so that is our domain. So once again, we're going to have to go with X is strictly greater than zero for both arguments because they're in the same equation. Okay, so we've got the ln of x plus the ln of x plus 1 equals the ln of 2. ln, remember, is the natural logarithm. It's the inverse function of e. Well, I have the log of an argument plus the log of an argument. That means I'm going to use the product rule. Make this bigger for you. All right, so we're going to have the ln of x times x plus 1 equals the ln of 2. Now at this point, I would normally write log base E of the argument equals the base raised to the exponent equals the argument, but not here because they're both logarithm statements and the logarithm looks like this. It's definitely a one-to-one -one function, so it definitely has an inverse, but what's important right now is that it's a one-to-one -one function. The ln, or the logarithm, is one-to-one. -one. And therefore, since we have the same function here, and it's one-to-one, -one, what that means is that the arguments have got to be equal. It's going to be true for all one-to-one -one functions. If the functions are the same kind of function, then the arguments of those functions, once you condense everything into function of, is going to be, um, um, they are going to be equal if the functions are the same. So here they are. So it's just a matter of saying, okay, x times x plus one equals two. How about that? You can't get easier than that. 
x squared. Did I copy that correctly though? It is x plus y. Okay, fine. x squared plus x equals two. Subtract two from both sides. x squared plus x minus two equals zero. I have got to get this gum out of my mouth. Okay. Now I'm going to factor this. Negative two equals negative two times positive one and negative uh, 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 positive two times negative one because positive two plus negative one equals positive one. And the B number is one. That means I'm going to use positive two and negative one when I factor. Make my empty parentheses equals zero. Separate my x's, that is, since x squared is x times x, I put an x in the first set of parentheses and the x in the second set of parentheses. Then I look over here and see that I'm going to use plus two and minus one, and then I set each factor equal to zero. X plus two equals zero, X minus one equals zero. I subtract two from both sides. X equals negative two. So subtract two, subtract two. Zero minus two is negative two. And add one, I shouldn't skip steps. Add one. X equals one. Then I have to go back and look at my domain. That is, what can x equal? I shouldn't have put not equals there. I should have put what can x equal? Well, it can only equal numbers strictly greater than zero. So that means negative two is out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Negative two is out. And positive one is in because it is strictly greater, one is strictly greater than zero. So one is what you type in the answer box. Ta-da! Different rules. Here we have to use the definition of what a logarithm is, here we have to use the definition of what a one-to-one -one function is. Or just remember that the ln of an argument equals the ln of an argument. When that's true, then the arguments are going to equal each other. You don't really have to know anything much about one-to-one -one functions. All right. Well, this looks a little beastly, doesn't it? But maybe it will be easy. I don't know. Let's find the domain first. B plus 36 has to be strictly greater than zero. B plus six has to be strictly greater than zero. And B has to be strictly greater than zero. So I come to my little improvised x-axis or number line. And solve the, the uh, inequalities first. Let's see, I'll start with B plus 36 just because it's on the left. B plus 36 is greater than zero. 
subtract 36 from both sides of the inequality. I'll get B equals negative 36. I'm going to write that here. Negative 36 on my quickie number line. Notice the base doesn't come into this at all. The argument of the logarithm function must be strictly greater than zero, period. All right, B plus six is greater than zero. Subtract six from both sides. Takes less room to do it that way. So B is going to be strictly greater than zero minus six, which is negative six. I'll put that right here. And then we have B is strictly greater than zero. Now I do recommend using colors if you can. Just because it's more fun, you might as well make it fun. All right, all the numbers greater than negative 36 are going to be to the right of negative 36 on the x-axis or number line. Um, all the numbers greater than negative 6 are going to be to the right of negative 6 on our number line. And all the numbers greater than 0 are going to be to the right of 0 on our number line. And the only place where I have all three arrows is over here to the right of 0. So that's going to be my domain. The answers I get, or the answer I get, the solutions I get, have to agree with the domain. They have to be in the domain, or they're not solutions. Now, about now you're saying, well, I don't have to do that. Um, I know from all these problems that X is going to end up being greater than zero. There's one problem here where that's not true. So yeah, with this one. So it's not always true, and we will discover that fairly soon. But right now, let's solve this. Look at that minus sign. That's different than a plus sign. Have you noticed that minus is different from plus? Cool, it's a different, different property. Okay, so we have log base 3 of B plus 36 minus log base 3 of B plus 6 equals log base 3 of B. With logs on both sides, we're going to be using the um, 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 one to one principle, the definition of a one to one function. Or just that the arguments are going to end up being equal, but I have to condense these two logs into one log statement. So here we go. We're going to use something called the quotient rule. And yes, you studied this already. So I bet you can recite it. The quotient rule, namely that when you have the log of an argument minus the log of an argument, the first argument becomes the numerator of a function. Don't talk and write. I'll write it first, how about that? Log base three of B plus 36 over B plus 
6 equals log base 3 of b. Okay, that's the way the quotient rule is. The left argument, the first argument, becomes the numerator, the second argument becomes the denominator. And now we do have log base three of an argument equals log base three of an argument. They have the same base, so we can use, they're the same, so the arguments are going to be equal. B plus 36 over B plus 6 equals B. Isn't that pretty? All right, now this is a rational function. It, a, a rational function, a rational equation. It's an equation that has a fraction in it. One fraction, one. So, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator of this fraction because it's the only fraction. Okay. Now over here, I'll say B plus six over one so that I can just be aware Okay, of what's on the top and what's on the bottom. Because when you're multiplying fractions, you can cross multiply, uh, cross cancel. When what's up here is the same as what's down there. So I will cancel. B plus six is gone from the left side. I'll have B plus 36 equals B times B plus B times six, which is B squared plus six B. Now it's a quadratic equation. So I have to pull everything over to the side where the B squared is positive. It's easier that way. Minus B, minus 36 from the left side and minus B minus 36 from the right side. I, that will give me zero equals B squared. 6B minus 1B is 5B, so plus 5B minus 36. And now if that's factorable, I'm going to factor, and it is. Negative 36, and I need to get a positive number, positive five. So negative 36 will factor into a bunch of things, and one of the things it will um, factor into is positive nine times negative four. And isn't it a wonderful coincidence that positive 9 plus negative 4 is positive 5, which is our middle number. Yay! So we're going to factor. Zero equals B plus nine times B minus four. Again, I set both uh, factors equal to zero and solve for B. Though I'll want to write X and so will you. Just cause we're used to it. B plus nine equals zero and B minus four equals zero. Subtract 9. Back on the left, b plus 9 equals 0. Subtract 9 and subtract 9. So that b equals negative 9. b minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides. b 
negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so we'll get B equals 0 plus 4, which is 4. To decide whether both are true or both are acceptable, both solutions are acceptable or only one or none, I have to look at the domain. Only the positive answer is acceptable. That's four. Excuse me, we throw out negative nine. So four is our solution. There. Okay. Now we're back to X and notice this, there is no log on the right hand side. So you can um, once again use the definition of a logarithm when you solve this. You wanna kind of look ahead, start thinking of your strategy, but the very first thing you have to do is look at the arguments and set them strictly greater than zero. X plus one is strictly greater than zero and X is strictly greater than zero. So here's zero. I mean, that is already solved, but X plus one, strictly greater than zero, I subtract one from both sides, and I will have one minus one is zero, so X is strictly greater than zero minus one, which is negative one. So once again, I have zero and negative one. All the numbers greater than negative one are to the right of negative one, and all of the numbers greater than zero are to the right of zero. So now, log base four of x plus one. Well, I didn't circle where the two lines agree, did I? Right here, where x is strictly greater than zero. We can only accept answers that are positive. Doesn't matter whether they're fractions or not. We can only accept answers that are not negative and not zero. So log base four of X plus one minus log base four of X. equals three, okay. All right, we're gonna use the quotient rule again. Because you have the log of an argument minus the log of an argument. Therefore, you're gonna have log base four of the argument X plus one over X equals three. Now we have no choice. We've got to say that four raised to the three power equals X plus one over X. which is 64, four times four. It's so tempting to say four times three is 12. It's not, well, it is, but not here. That's not four times three. It's four times four times four. Four repeated three times. The th or I guess you'd say, never mind. Let's not go into it. The vagaries of English. X plus one 
over x equals 64. I'll multiply both sides by x because this is now a rational equation. And I'll put this x over 1 because it's going to multiply a fraction. And over here, I don't need to do that, so I'll just multiply by x. Over here, the x's cancel, leaving me with x plus 1 equals 64x. Now look at this, we don't have a quadratic equation. That's wonderful, less work. All I have to do is get my x terms together on the same side of the equal sign. So I subtract x from the left, leaving me with positive one, or European one, equals 64x minus one x is 63x. And to solve for x, I divide by 63. So x equals 1 over 63, which is positive. Therefore, it is acceptable because it's greater than 0. How do you know? Because it doesn't have a negative sign in front of it. So it's going to be in this group of numbers strictly greater than zero. Now this is the one you have to watch out for. Because you've made this rule, probably I did when I was a student, that X has got to be greater than zero, and all this mumble jumble, x is still going to be strictly greater than zero, but it's not going to be true here. So check this out. x plus seven has to be strictly greater than zero. So subtract seven, and subtract seven from both sides, you'll have X is strictly greater than negative seven. Okay, now you're gonna have X minus five is strictly greater than zero. Add five to both sides. X is greater than five. And finally, x is greater than zero. So now we have to write these numbers as they exist on the x-axis or the number line in relationship to each other. That is, a negative number is always to the left of zero. Then there's zero, because zero is less than five, and then there's five. So there's our number line. All the numbers greater than negative seven are to the right of negative seven. All the numbers greater than zero are to the right of zero. All the numbers greater than positive five are to the right of positive five. And now look at where all three arrows are located at the same time. To the right of five. So for this problem, the domain is going to be x must be greater than 5 in order to have an answer that satisfies all 
three inequalities. That is, it's a number greater than negative seven and a number greater than five and a number greater than zero. Those are only going to exist over here. So, now that we know what our answer has to be and what our answer cannot be, we're going to work on this. The ln of x plus 7 plus the ln of x minus 5 equals 2 times the ln of x. Better write it down first before I scroll up. So the ln of x plus 7 plus the ln of x minus 5 equals 2 times the ln of x. Now, we're going to use the product rule. Yeah, I would like to use red, but not everybody can see red. So, um, we're going to use the product rule for logarithms over here. And on the other side, we're going to use the power rule for logarithms. Why? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. This two in front needs to go back up here where it may have been eventually, I mean, originally. That's the way I think of it anyway, because we have to condense these logarithms so that we get the logarithm of an argument equals the logarithm of an argument, not two times the logarithm of an argument. Okay, now, the log of an argument plus the log of an argument is the log of those two arguments multiplied together. LN is just a logarithm. The LN of X plus seven times the LN of, oh well, times X minus five. So we have the LN of x plus 7 times x minus 5 equals the ln of x squared, x raised to the 2 power. Now we have the ln, ln of an argument. Let's write it like this for a minute. The ln of an argument equals the ln of an argument. And let's call it argument one and argument two just to keep them separate. So the ln of argument one equals the ln of argument two. Therefore, argument one has to equal argument two. That's what we're going for. So that means that x plus 7 times x minus 5 equals x squared. Now we're going to solve this. x squared minus 5x plus 7x minus 35 equals x squared. 
So x squared plus 2x, negative 5x plus 7x is positive 2x, minus 35 equals x squared. This is a quadratic equation, so we have to pull everything over to one side. We subtract x squared and we subtract x squared. And look what happens. This is like Christmas, Christmas early. X squared minus x squared is zero, bye bye. And x squared minus x squared is zero. Again, bye bye. 2x minus 35 equals zero. And now we're only go going to get one answer. And if it's not greater than five, we've got to throw it out. So there's a chance we can have no solution. Would they do something mean like that to us? You bet. However, it's not going to happen here. Thank goodness, because when I add 35 to both sides, I get a positive 35 on the right side of the equation. 2x equals 35. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 35 over 2, or a decimal, let's see what they're going for. Ah, they gave us a fraction this time. Yes, and it says specifically, type an integer or a fraction. That means if you type a decimal, you'll get it wrong because you have to read the instructions. Important. Okay. So that's kind of a good feeling. I always felt like if I go to a lot of work and then the answer is no solution, that I've been cheated. I bet I'm not the only person who feels that way. All right, now we're going to solve this. And what do you do when you have a number and a logarithm? On, well, you have a logarithm equals a number minus a logarithm. We haven't dealt with that, but we're going to now. But first, before I deal with anything, before you deal with anything, let's find our domain, namely, the domain comes from the argument of the function. We're going to have x strictly greater than zero and x minus three strictly greater than zero. So that means we'll add three to both sides. We'll get x is strictly greater than three. Let's graph those numbers. Let's plot those numbers on the number line. zero and positive three. Now, all of the numbers to the, well, all of the numbers greater than zero are to the right of zero. And all of the numbers greater than three are to the right of three. And look where the numbers overlap. I mean, look where the lines overlap, the arrows. Here, greater than three. Our domain is going to be x greater than three. The answer we come up with is going to have to be strictly greater than three. And look at this. It looks like the answer is, is barely greater than three. All right, now let's write down this equation. I can't scroll up until I write down the equation. 
log base 4 of x equals 1 minus log base 4 of x minus 3. Well, I think the easiest thing to do is just to add log base 4 of x minus 3 to both sides. I'm going to do that. So plus log base 4 of x minus 3 plus log base 4 of x minus 3. Over on the right, negative log base 4 of x minus 3 plus positive uh, plus log base 4 of x minus 3 equals 0. So we now have the log of x, log base 4 of x, plus log base 4 of x minus 3 equals, ta-da, 1. Now we've got all our logs on one side, our number, our constant on the other. We're going to use the definition of a logarithm to solve this equation after I combine these two logs into one log. So we're going to use the product rule. Which will be log base 4 oh, bah, bah, of x times x minus 3 equals 1. Now we can use the definition of a logarithm, which is that the argument equals the base raised to the power, the exponent. So the argument goes here. Let's make it go around like this. The base goes here. The exponent goes here. And that will give us x squared minus 3x equals 4. All right, we got a quadratic equation. Four's got to move. Let's subtract four and subtract four from both sides of the equation. Then we'll have x squared minus three x minus four equals zero. Okay, negative four equals negative four times positive one, and negative four plus positive one equals negative three, which is indeed our B number. So I now know how to factor. minus 4 plus 1, set each factor equal to 0. So x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. Over on the left, x minus 4 equals 0, add 4 
to both sides of the equation. X equals four. And over on the left, subtract one. We add X plus one equals zero, subtract one from both sides of the equation. That gives us X equals zero minus one is negative one. Now go back and look at the domain. Don't trust yourself to remember it. X is strictly greater than three. So X has got to be strictly greater than three for any acceptable answer. Negative one is not strictly greater than three. Goodbye, negative one. Four is strictly greater than three. It's always been greater than three as far as long as I've been alive. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is solving a logarithmic equation. There are two methods. Get them down before the final.